Hello everyone and welcome back to another Wizard 101 video. Today, I'm doing something I literally just said yesterday, I think, or the day before. I said in the video, you know, I'm not going to do a pet guide video because I already have like four of them up on my channel and I thought it would be redundant if I made another one, but I've seen a lot of people talking about it. Like, in, like... A large portion of my comments have been like, what do you think about a pet guide? What would you do for a pet? Stuff like that. And I'm just going to nip that bud and say, hey, whatever, let's make a pet guide video. Now, if I seem tired, it's because I am. I haven't slept in about 24 hours now, running purely off of monster energy and teenager fumes. All right. Having a good time indeed. So before I pass out, I figured I'd grace you all with this video. I'm probably going to be asleep by the time this is uploaded. So if I don't respond to any comments right away, that's why. So if you want to, make sure to subscribe for the dedication on in that regard. But let's get into the video. Enough shilling out, that kind of stuff. God, my forehead's huge. Um, sorry, I'm just very distracted right now. Also, my camera's too high. All right, we're all good. Let's actually get into the video. So... First things first, pets. They exist. They have stats. They're one of the most helpful things in this game. Um, you may ask, why are they the most helpful thing in this game? Well, if you look at my fire's damage pet right now, this gives, how much damage is that? That's 18 plus, that's like 20, uh, I can't count right now. It's like 31 damage. 31 damage is a huge amount that means my damage go from 130 to 160 which is crazy and that could actually be higher if it hadn't got crit and it got another boon it would have been 35 damage so i'd be at 164 right now which would be nutty just disgustingly nutty now you may be asking noah how do you get this what do i want in a pet all of that will be answered and more so first things first let's start with what pet you want well the pet i would recommend for every single school because especially because this is good for low levels and for solo questing is the level 118 pet now uh, if you want you can just look it up because i don't i'm not going to go over all of them but you also can go for the hybrids so for example fire has the rage bull pet um, as a 118 pet, but you could also go for the Onari Kookaburra, which is the fire version of the life pet. Either of these work. Either way, you want to go for one of those pets, most likely. Same with the other sc uh, the schools. You want to go for the 118 pet. The reason for that is, as I said, it gives a pet, but especially for life and death, they give um, some very important spells. Life, which is the Kookaburra, Right here, you can see, gives Leaf Storm at Ancient, I believe, which means you'll have a four pet, a four pip hit all spell to be able to use on your life. That's instrumental. Same with Death. Both of them are really important to get. I forget what Death's pet is. Uh, it's the, it's not the Ghastly Opossum. What is it? Is it the Gulcher? It might be the Gulcher. No, it's not the Gulcher. I don't know. You have to look it up. I'm I I'm I'm sorry. I'm just gonna say go for the 118 pet. Look up which one's the 118 pet for you. But you figured it out. It's not that difficult. Let's move on. Now you're asking what talents do I want? Because the best part about the hatching kiosk is that they have different talents. You can see here this pet has different talents. Whatever. Well, it depends on your school. So I'm gonna give a list right now. If you are fire storm myth or death you want to go for a pet that has four damages plus in my opinion um for example my pet has four damage talents technically it has three it has an extra boost and a critical and then i put a socket but realistically you want to go for something that has three or four damage talents specifically dealer and giver now the reason for that is is those are the things that give the two most amount of damage and will be incredibly useful so if you don't know you can go to here and you can search for pet talents say i'm looking for a good fire pet i type in fire right here and i want fire dealer and i want fire giver i search for all of these talents i scroll through these until i find oh look at that a rage bull this one sucks because this has a fairy friend um this one's really good there you can see a five damage pet right here uh hatch this pet's no longer available that happens sometimes you just gotta deal with it um you just keep searching through until you find the perfect pet for you um 
I'm, I'm not going to go into great detail, but another thing that's important to pay attention to is the stats on this on these bad boys. You want things that are closer to 250, 260. Um, realistically, a good level is 250 in everything. You can see my will here is up to 324. That's because I got the plus 65 will talent, which allows me to get 11 giver, or sorry, 11, uh, se 11 dealer, 7 giver. That's that. Now, let me go into um, the early game pets that you want. Now, a lot of early game pets, in my opinion, you're going to want crit. And the reason for that is, is that with a crit pet, early game, you're going to be critting for the percentage of how much level you are. So, for example, if you're level 20, you're going to have a 20% chance to crit, no matter how much crit rating you have, which is incredibly important like once you reach dragon spire levels level 40 and above you have a 40 percent chance to crit that is a high percent chance to crit at that level it's great fantastic that's the point you want to be looking for something similar to my pet right here where it gives three damages and one crit that's for hitting schools i would recommend though for non-hitting schools you also go for a crit but this is where it changes for ice um for ice life and balance I would heavily recommend going for resistances. I would recommend going into Browse Pets, searching for talents again, removing those stupid talents I put there earlier, typing in spell, put spell proof and spell defying there, search for all those talents, and find the pet of your school that has those, maybe a dealer and maybe a critical. The reason for that is, is that you, okay, you see here, this has a, this, this is an interesting one. It gives uh, 20 extra resist. Basically, the reason is is that you want to get that resistance for um, for the more defensive schools. Personally, I think that if you're an attacking school, as the ones I mentioned in the past, you should not go for resistances on a pet because it is just a waste of time, a waste of talent. I think it, it it's just much better to go for something similar to my fire pet, right? And this is especially important where like if you have a early game fire this pet think about it 35 da or 31 damage is zeus level gear at level one with a chance to crit so that is crazy i can't stress how crazy that is by level 10 you're probably going to reach around 40 damage by level 25 you're going to be around 50 plus 50 at level 20 is crazy it's insane can't stress that enough so i would recommend going for something like this now that is the pet and talent guide section of the video if you have any questions please leave them in the comments now i'm going to go on what i'd recommend doing in regard to training your pet for the next like two minutes of this video because i feel like it could be helpful for a lot of you if you're looking on the best way to train your pet if you're not interested in that click off uh i enjoyed you for the beginning part so let's go for that now first thing i would always recommend doing is starting your pet on a level one character the reason for that is is that every time you level up you get energy and you level up a lot early game so every single time you level up you go back to pet pavilion you train up your pet and then you go questing again until you level up and then you rinse and repeat now this leads me to number two thing i'd recommend doing and that is getting the skip game option um if you don't know if you win 25 games in any game you can then skip that game and just take the energy cost it saves so much time so what i recommend doing is getting a baby pet don't feed it any pet snacks do the dance game you only need to get three out of five of the dance memorizations correct which is only like a four or five consecutive which isn't that hard at all so three in a row and then you can fail the next two and then i would recommend just skipping and continuing on it would take if you think about it about 60 energy worth uh to do so and likely your pet isn't gonna level up to teen and cost that energy or raise that energy cost to four in that time and then you never have to do it again so i'd recommend doing that in the beginning for any pet you have it just makes training so much easier later on now you're going to be wanting to continue that strat but look for double xp double pet xp is insane for a lot of reasons first thing 
ordinary pet snacks like Shanta Puddings, which by the way, Shanta Pudding is one of the best. Buy them in the bazaar. Tier 7 Ice Pet Snack gives strength, power, and agility maybe, which are all really good stats to level up. Um, those will give you 20 each, which is the equivalent of a Mega Snack without double pet XP. Well, not a Mega Snack, but a lesser Mega Snack. Um, if you've defeated Zafaria, you can farm the Final Dungeon Mirror Lake, which takes about 5 to 10 minutes, depending on the strength of your team, and get two Pixie Sticks at the end, which give 30 each. With double pet XP, they give 60 each. So if you think about it, 5 to 10 minutes for 120 pet XP is not bad in the slightest. Another thing I'd recommend, gardening. If you can garden, garden. One Evil Magnum Pea or one Couch Potato gives you one Mega Snack a week. That might not seem like a lot, but the times in between double pet XP is over a month. That's at least four if you have one. Keep that in mind. I have like 10 at least just from doing the, just from questing, and that is 10 Mega Snacks a week. I could have 40 Mega Snacks by the time I reach double pet XP, which would be so much XP. I could get a pet from baby to ultra with those 40 Mega Snacks most likely. Don't quote me on that but I think I could. So that's really all I wanted to point out. The only other thing I'd recommend is that you can also get mega snacks from fishing. Um, I believe in Krakatopia in the sea, is it in the secret shop? It's not in the secret shop, but there is a snack, uh, a recipe vendor that gives pet snack recipes. And there's these fish that you can catch somewhere in the game. I forget where, I should probably go more into depth with this, but I'd recommend you look up a different guide on that. Look up like Wizard 101 fishing mega snack guide, something like that. I'm not going to go into it. I'm way too tired, way too lazy. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it was helpful. I just saw a lot of people asking for a pet guide. I figured I'd oblige. I'm sorry that I'm tired. I'm sporadic. I'm talking a lot. So I'm going to spare you from the pain and end this video here. If you found it useful, drop a like. If you have any other tips for people, please leave them in the comments below. I, I'm only human. I miss things sometimes. And I look for you guys to be able to, you know, push up in the comments like where I might have missed something. Um, I've seen some videos where people were like, what about the new social system? That would be useful for teleporting. And I'm like, yeah, that's a great idea. I don't know why I didn't think of that. I appreciate them leaving that comment. I, you know, you know who you are. Uh, please do that if you have any tips and tricks, whatever. So, I'll see you in the next video. Have a fantastic day. Thank you all for watching.